Welcome back, everyone, to the second half of day five, the final day of Digital Disrupt this week. Are you ready to jump into the next session entitled Empowering the Agriculture Sector with Digital Ag Tech Adoption? Moderating is in this powerful panel discussion is Navid Silatambi, Head of Digital Ag Tech, Sectorial Pilot Projects, and Drone Tech of the Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation, MTech. Navin leads the key national initiatives under the digital adoption pillar, bridging both the demand and supply ecosystem towards empowering digital adoption to deliver impact at scale across key economic sectors. He brings with him 15 years of industrial experience with a wide spectrum of roles with significant exposure to project management. Before I pass on the floor to Navin, here's a video to set the scene for discussion on digital ag tech adoption in our agriculture sector. Ladang satelit di Teluk Mengkuang, Selangor merupakan ladang fertigasi moden seluas 5 ekar yang fokus untuk penanaman cili dan timun. Ia merupakan projek sulung pertubuhan peladang kawasan PPK Kuala Langat untuk peladangan secara besar-besaran. Penanaman cili dan timun mempunyai risiko yang tinggi sekiranya faktor cuaca serta pembajaan yang tepat dan konsisten tidak ditangani dengan sistematik. Dengan sokongan Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation, MDEC, PPK Kuala Langat dan Syarikat Teknologi Tempatan iaitu Atilzi Digital, ladang satelit telah mengadaptasi sistem fertigasi pinta bagi meningkatkan hasil keluaran. Sebelum uh, kita gunakan IoT ni memang kita terpaksa gunakan banyak tenaga lah untuk bekerja di ladang petigasi ni. Bila dah ada mesin uh, IoT ni adalah lebih memudahkan uh, kerana kita dah tak payah nak uh, buat uh, bancuhan baja secara manual maknanya dia dah diuruskan secara uh, automatik menggunakan IoT dan lebih kemudahannya kita boleh kawal daripada jarak jauh. Sistem fertigasi pinta ini telah memberikan penjimatan sehingga 30% bagi penggunaan baja dan mengurangkan penggunaan tenaga pekerja sebanyak 25%. Pengaktifan baja dapat dilakukan dengan tepat dan kawalan menggunakan teknologi Internet of Things (IoT) berdasarkan keadaan cuaca, kelembapan dan tumbesaran pokok dapat dicapai melalui sebuah platform khas. Kiranya ada apa-apa masalah yang berlaku ke atas uh, IoT kita uh, sama ada sistem dia down ataupun ada sesuatu yang mengganggu kita akan dapat maklumat daripada mesej yang disediakan oleh pihak server IoT mesin ini. Sebelum kita menggunakan mesin IoT, hasil uh, saya untuk 2,000 polybag lebih kurang 5 tan. Uh, apabila telah menggunakan mesin IoT ia bertambah menjadi hampir 6 tan. Penggunaan sistem dapat dicapai ke tahap yang optimum sekiranya ia digunakan dengan bijak dengan membuat analisis terhadap data-data yang diperolehi serta melakukan pengubah suaian berdasarkan pemerhatian. Tanpa disiplin dan komitmen oleh peladang, sistem tidak mampu memberikan hasil yang diharapkan. Saya harapkanlah anak-anak muda ni Uh, boleh mencaburi bidang pertanian yang lebih mudah seperti ini dan hasilnya juga uh, amat memuaskan untuk uh, penghidupan masa depan kita. Ladang Integrasi Haji Jutia merupakan ladang tenakan integrasi terkenal di Simpang Renggam. Meliputi kawasan seluas 40 ekar, Haji Jutia telah mengusahakan tanaman kuntan seperti betik eksotika, pisang berangan, sayur-sayuran dan ternakan seperti ayam, kambing biri-biri dan ikan air tawar. Saya melibatkan diri dalam peternakan ayam, industri ayam ini daripada tahun 90, 90 sekarang dan banyak diku-diku yang saya tempuhi. Di antaranya penyakit yang amat ketikal masa itu. Menurut Wat Judia, sumber air yang bersih merupakan faktor paling penting dalam menjaga mutu ayam daging selain daripada pelet berkualiti dan pelalian penyakit. Menurut Wat Judia lagi, sebelum ini, banyak usaha dan teknologi pernah dicuba bagi menjamin kualiti air yang sesuai untuk dijadikan minuman ayam. 
Tapi kalau uh, air yang dirawat menggunakan klorin tidak boleh. Ubat itu akan tawar. Apatah lagi uh, kalau kita gunakan mixin dan sebagainya. Dia akan tawar dan tidak berkesan ubat itu. Saya pernah dulu belum menggunakan mixin ini, uh, pedal peroi. Tak mesepah ya, kena pedal peroi. Bila pedal peroi itu, bila tak boleh proses, buah pinggang akan bengkak. Bila bengkak, semua makanan tidak diazam. Ayamnya tidak akan membesar. Saya berusaha cara dan kaedah mana yang boleh ayam ini sebagai saya sebagai penternak membolehkan saya mendapat untung dan tanpa ada perubatan yang tinggi. Sistem rawatan dan pantauan air pinta merupakan inisiatif yang disokong oleh Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation (MDEC) dengan kerjasama Ladang Haji Judia dan dua syarikat teknologi tempatan iaitu DNZ Consult dan Solnovation Analytics. Di sini uh, pertama kali kita uh, ada beberapa uh, stok uh, carbon untuk apa mengisi air ya. Satu dia kena ubat pertama bahan utama adalah sodium klorid. Sodium klorid kita bancuh dalam air Lepas itu akan disedut oleh mesin ini, dia akan mengeluarkan enolek dan etolek, kena campur. 50-50 lah kena campur. Pada enolek ini untuk menukuman, etolek ini untuk gemuk ayam. Jadi kurang kita menggunakan vitamin. Sensor diletakkan di semua tempat takungan air untuk memberi data yang tepat bagi penghasilan enolek ANK yang sempurna untuk pembersihan air minuman ayam. Saya telah diberkahkan oleh MDEC. Satu sistem untuk berkawal jauh menggunakan internet di mana ada internet, telefon saya boleh kawal, boleh tengok aktif tak aktif, cukup tak cukup dia punya apa ORP-nya ha, Itu daripada jauh Dengan adanya sistem perawatan dan pemantauan air pinta ini Wak Judia mampu meningkatkan hasil dan mutu ayam daging ladangnya dan dapat mengurangkan kadar kematian ayam disebabkan oleh keracunan air belum menggunakan mesin ini, kadar kematian yang tinggi disebabkan itu loh ekor lain atau pembah pinggang kadang-kadang sampai menjejak 15-16% kematian tetapi bila menggunakan mesin ini Alhamdulillah si Adi macam ada tapi tak berapa teruk jadi kematian yang rendah lebih kurang 5% ke bawah saya menyeru kepada rakan-rakan seperjuangan ternakan ayam Khususnya potongan anak ayam yang akan kita libatkan cara komersial, saya sarankan supaya menggunakan mesin ini kerana ia banyak kebaikannya. Kalau uh, dulunya tak gunakan mesin mungkin banyak risiko kematian tinggi dan sebagainya tetapi kalau kita gunakan mesin ini insyaAllah kita boleh merawat air dan uh, boleh ayam pun sehat dan boleh gemuk. Peladangan sayur salad premium di tanah rendah menggunakan konsep rumah hijau merupakan teknik yang amat jarang dilakukan di Malaysia. Namun, ia bukanlah penghalang bagi Tok Lan Agritrade untuk mengusahakan peladangan ini di Kuching, Sarawak. Pemilik ladang The Farmia, Encik Saiful Bahri berkongsi pengalaman beliau dalam mengusahakan peladangan salad premium organik berkonsepkan hidroponik sejak beberapa tahun yang lalu. Sebelum adanya sistem uh, IoT ini, uh, pekerja-pekerja uh, kena fokus kepada permasalahan-permasalahan yang ada di, di ladang. Contohnya dengan uh, uh, pembajaan, dengan pengawalan racun uh, serangga dan uh, pengurusan tanaman-tanaman uh, yang terlalu difokuskan. Jadi kita tidak dapat untuk melaksanakan kerja-kerja yang lain. Bagi menangani pelbagai masalah yang dihadapi, Encik Saiful Bahri sentiasa mencari idea dan solusi bagi mengurangkan kos operasi ladang serta mengatasi masalah perosak sayur-sayuran yang telah ditanam. Kita telah mengoptimumkan penggunaan air OT ini untuk kegunaan sepenuhnya di ladang. Daripada sistem ini, kita boleh mengawal suhu, kelembapan ladang, pembajaan, dan uh, yang penting, uh, pengawalan racun serangga perosak. Sistem semburan kabus pinta yang dipasang di ladang The Farmia merupakan inisiatif yang disokong oleh Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation, MDEC, 
dengan kerjasama Totlan Agritrade dan syarikat teknologi tempatan iaitu Red Tone IoT. Sistem uh, semburan uh, automatik ini uh, kita le- boleh mengawal uh, masalah-masalah serangan serangan posak di ladang dengan lebih efisien secara automatik. Apa yang lebih menarik? Sistem ini juga boleh dikawal oleh peladang secara jarak jauh menggunakan telefon pintar. Dengan adanya sistem pengawalan uh, suhu di dalam uh, greenhouse, uh, ia berfungsi dengan adanya sensor yang mengesan uh, kadar uh, suhu yang uh, maksimum. Jadi secara automatik, kipas akan mengawal, uh, uh, mengawal suhu di dalam ladang Uh, untuk mendapatkan uh, suhu yang ideal untuk uh, tanaman kita. Dengan sistem semburan kabus pintar ini, ladang The Farmia telah berjaya meningkatkan hasil dan mutu tanaman sayuran untuk pasaran tempatan dan antarabangsa. Dengan ada sistem ini, kita boleh menjimatkan uh, penggunaan racun uh, perosak dan secara langsung akan menjimatkan uh, duit saikap. Lah. Dan uh, di samping itu kita boleh fokus lebih fokus kepada marketing, uh, penjualan uh, dan untuk menghasilkan uh, produk-produk sayuran yang berkualiti. Ternyata sistem uh, Smart IoT ini adalah yang terbaik yang kita gunakan uh, setakat ini dan ia boleh menjadi satu punca kejayaan kepada sebuah ladang seperti The Farm ya. Peneas monodon merupakan sejenis udang yang sesuai diternak di kolam kerana daya ketahanannya yang tinggi dan kadar tumbesaran yang cepat. Ia mempunyai permintaan yang tinggi dengan harga pasaran yang tinggi baik di dalam atau luar negara. Melihatkan peluang ini, Encik So Kong Beng membangunkan sebuah ladang pertenakan udang harimau di balik pulau Pulau Pinang. Dan kini, setelah hampir sedekat berkecimpung dalam bidang ini, Encik So serta anaknya Encik Michael telah banyak mempelajari pelbagai permasalahan dalam menternak udang harimau. We do our pond farming business based on scientific data, right? So we emphasize a lot on four key parameters, right? One being the pH, one being the uh, dissolved oxygen, um, the water level, as well as the water temperature. Untuk memantau 34 buah kolam pada setiap masa. Di dalam kawasan ladang seluas 111 ekar memerlukan tenaga kerja yang besar. So before this, um, we actually do a lot of manual work in uh, gathering this data. Right, we have to walk around the whole farm. Uh, as you can see, the farm is two kilometers wide. So uh, we have to walk around manually gather the data. And as the weather, when it's raining or it's too hot, we get an interruption in the data. Right, so um, it is very, very time-consuming and uh, very heavy in terms of manpower. So few years ago, we started to uh, develop this smart aquaculture system um, with the sole uh, purpose of reducing our cost and, of course, to improve our farming process. Sistem Aquaculture Pintar Farm IT merupakan inisiatif yang disokong oleh Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation (MDEC) dengan kerjasama Global Goodway dan sebuah syarikat teknologi tempatan iaitu Linear DMS Solutions. So what does the system do is that we'll place sensors, namely uh, pH sensors, uh, dissolved oxygen sensor, water height, and as well as temperature sensor into the pond. So what it does is it will send the data collected real time into our server, and then it will go up to the cloud where we're able to extract the data, the real time data from the cloud, and uh, we can do analysis with it. Uh, we can trigger alert with it, and we can also look back at the uh, uh, historical results. Dengan sistem pinta ini, Global Goodway boleh memantau keadaan kolam pada setiap masa melalui platform Farm IT. Sistem ini akan memancarkan bacaan tahap kualiti air kolam setiap 6 minit, mengaktifkan pemberian makanan ternakan dan memberi amaran sekiranya berlaku lita pintas atau gangguan bekalan elektrik. We have seen a significant reduction in manpower and an increase in our survival rate from 74% to 95%. This resulted in greater yield and directly translate to better profits. The way forward in the industry is through technology, and I believe the smart aquaculture system is the key to success.
Aplikasi Smart Communication Speed Ini adalah produk kami Yang digunakan untuk membantu petani uh, Mendapatkan sistem petani yang moden Yang lebih uh, tepat Dan uh, memenuhi keperluan petani Yang tuan lihat adalah sistem Yang kami namakan sebagai Smart Communication Speed uh, Ini adalah kita punya Smart Control Panel Ini adalah touchscreen Ini adalah button untuk function manual Jadi sekiranya kita punya sistem Uh, mengalami masalah ataupun internet connection uh, mengalami masalah kita boleh suka kepada mode manual dan kita boleh menjalankan aktiviti pembajaan seperti biasa sebagai contoh dengan begini saya memberikan bajet kepada pokok dengan menggunakan kaedah manual kita namakan sebagai sensor node so, sensor node ni kita akan attach sekali bersama-sama dengan sensor kemudian di bawah adalah uh, kita punya centrifugal pump tujuan dia untuk menggaulkan baja kita dilengkapkan bersama-sama dengan dosis pump untuk baja A dan B ke dalam tangki bancuhan baja. Ini adalah kami punya sistem. Air baja akan masuk ke dalam tangki dengan membekalkan beberapa sensor yang disediakan. Mohd Firdaus bin Mohd Ghazali Saya berkelulusan dalam international business Menjalankan pertanian rock melon dan timun Selama 6 tahun Dahulunya kita pakai uh, Orang panggil semi auto Kita hanya boleh siram otomatik saja Kita tak boleh tengok apa-apa Berbeza pula dari segi smart farming ni Pancuhan dari segi baja sekarang Tidak menggunakan langsung tenaga manusia dia hanya menggunakan komputer, dia akan pump parti baja AB tu ke dalam tangki bancuan kita 600 gallon tu secara automatik Mengikut apa yang kita dah tentukan Kita boleh monitoring dia punya dari segi kelembapan, isi dan dia punya suhu Maknanya semua kita boleh tengok data-data tu secara live sebab dia ada internet connection boleh berada di mana-mana menggunakan telefon bimbit untuk melihat data bacaan bajet. Okey harapan saya untuk masa hadapan dengan penggunaan smart farming ni nombor satu saya dengan secara tidak langsung dapat mengurangkan penggunaan pekerja. Nombor dua bacaan yang tepat menggunakan smart farming ni penghasilan uh, hasil saya semakin meningkat. Nombor tiga mengurangkan penggunaan baja. Nombor empat memudahkan semua petani yang menggunakan smart farming ni disebabkan kita boleh monitor keadaan kebun kita walaupun kita berada di tempat jauh. Saya juga ingin mengambil peluang ini untuk berterima kasih kepada Kerajaan Negeri Selangor, MDEC, Kementerian Industri Asas Tani dan agensi yang berkenaan kerana memberi peluang infra dari segi smart farming dan khidmat sokongan.
Hello. At Ideologic, we are passionate about developing digital transformation solutions that are easy to use and cost effective. This past one year, during the pandemic time, we have developed DigiPoultry, an IoT based poultry management solution in collaboration with Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation, or MDEC in short. So, what is this DigiPoultry? Well, a year ago, we met with many broiler farmers in the poultry sector and we worked with them to understand their operations and the issues they're facing. We noticed that they had no way to track house conditions live. They had to literally go in to check the temperature and humidity. They were only tracking temperature and humidity, which means they weren't tracking ammonia, carbon dioxide, which our research told were very important parameters. Bird weight is not always ideal and it keeps changing. So let us consider this. The farmer puts in all the hard work and sometimes he doesn't get the right weight and he doesn't know why. And that is when our DigiPowl tree came about. In collaboration with MDEC, we have embarked on the journey of transforming the broiler farming operations. So how does DigiPowl tree work? Well, we place a device like this in the barn and it's just plug and play. The device has a SIM card that transmits data live to your desktop or your mobile. The farmer can track four parameters, temperature, relative humidity, carbon dioxide, and ammonia from anywhere and anytime. You don't have to travel to multiple barns anymore to check the house conditions. And we did not stop there. We went further and created an application that can help the farmers track their daily operations like feed, weight, and mortality. From the traditional filling up of operational forms and throwing them away after the batch is done, the farmers can now track their data long-term and make informed decisions. Analytics like tracking the bird growth and mortality can provide a perspective to the farmer on their operations. Farmers can now use our solution to also do some basic batch accounting and see their profitability. Now imagine tracking that kind of information over a year. What can it do? We have collaborated with farmers for developing DigiPoultry and during the pilot phase, we have found that the farmers are able to see up to 15% reduction in mortality because, well, they have 24 bar 7 visibility on their farm, which means better control. They are able to now track key operational factors like feed conversion ratio and poultry efficiency factor, which they are unable to easily calculate before. This is helping them plan their future batches much better. And also timely action during adverse conditions, such as, say, high ammonia levels and ensuring the best output. Simply put, we have learned that DigiPoultry is making it easy for the farmer and manage their poultry and gives them peace of mind. And we are not just stopping there. We continue to work on DigiPoultry to make it an ever-evolving solution, adding more features, analytics, and functions. We are ideologic. This is our journey, and it has only begun. Hi, this is Cyril co-founder of Solnovation Analytics and our product is called Agro Doctors. Our team consists of agronomists, technology experts and agriculturists. The co-founder, I myself am a fourth generation coffee and rubber farmer. Agro Doctors solves problems of farmers that are caused by lack of funds to invest in technology, lack of data on crop health, and lack of a tool to measure quality of end output. AgroDoctors is an affordable data-driven diagnostic platform for digital crop health and commodity analysis. We provide farmers with personalized digital solutions through a customized crop calendar real-time info and analytics on soil, leaf, and other physical parameters like moisture. We make a recommendation to farmers on efficient use of fertilizer. 
we also connect agronomists with farmers. Solvation Analytics is a digital technology partner of MDEC. During our trials in palm oil plantations, we increased productivity by 10%, reduced fertilizer utilization by 15%, and improved quality of the product by 10%. Hi, I'm Devan Rajam, the co-founder and director of Solnovation Analytics. With respect to the market size for agro doctors, in Malaysia, we have 1.4 million farmers in the, in the rice, rubber, fruits and vegetables and palm sectors. With respect to the business model for agro doctors, Solnovation Analytics plans to charge the farmers on a pay-per-use model. This is Audrey. Please allow me to share some insights with you. Do you know that you're sitting on a gold mine? Your data can unlock your wealth potential for your business. How do your customers interact with your brand and product? When do they interact best? What type of promotions would bring the best results in revenue? Companies take a trial and error approach to answer those questions. But data analytics can save you time and money and improve your understanding of customers, of their spending patterns and what they buy and when they buy it. That's what we do at Cicada. We analyze your data with you to unlock the wealth potential of your business. Now let's take an FMB client that we helped recently. By using Cicada, they identified non-peak periods and started promotions to increase walk-ins during this period, which resulted in an additional 5,000 transactions per month. Using basket sales analysis, SKU combos and hero products to create promotions that worked for our client and tracking it and fine-tuning it we further increase revenue by 6% per year. How amazing is that? Now, another FMB operator analyzed their customers' payment methods and negotiated a good promotion together with a bank credit card, which brought an additional 200,000 ringgit in revenue per month. These improvements give our clients an ROI of at least 50 times what they have invested. Imagine what we could do for your business. Now, let me share with you just one more case study. Cicada helped a supermarket retailer realize that their store branded mineral water was selling poorly when compared to a more popular brand. Upon investigation, they realized their product placement on the shelves were not visible to their customers. After fixing that, they increased their store branded mineral water sales by 300%. All this data can be given to you in one dashboard so that you have important information in real time at your fingertips. Data analytics can open up a whole new world of potential for you. Hidden revenue and treasure that you would not be able to know is there for the taking. Now come work with us. We want to unlock your hidden wealth potential, which are your data. Thank you.
how can we improve the situation in agricultural labor? With the current pandemic, labor supply has dropped and many businesses have increased labor costs. To offset the hike labor costs, frequent low intensity work that incurs unnecessary labor is something that can be avoided. In hydroponic and fertigation systems, nutrient dosing has to be done frequently to reach optimum conditions for the nutrient solution. When done manually, this process takes just a few minutes to complete. This process needs to be done periodically every few hours or few days, depending on the system. In enclosed hydroponic systems, where many laborious tasks are eliminated, only intensive work like harvesting, transplanting, and cleaning are necessary, all of which can be completed with part-time laborers. The issue with dosing is it only requires very little work every now and then. If this is done manually, a laborer must be stationed there, resulting in labor losses when there are no work left to be done. A practical solution is to automate the process and eliminate the labor need. This lowers operational costs while increasing efficiency and accuracy of the process. Through the use of industrial sensors, water pumps, and an onboard computer processing data in real time, tasks such as dosing and sampling, which takes just a few minutes a day to complete, can be done automatically. In addition, the quality of the environment, from its temperature and humidity, to the water's pH level and nutrient concentration is monitored constantly 24-7, ensuring the plants grow optimally throughout its lifespan. Less work means less laborers and less cost. In addition, there's better quality crops, better harvests, and ultimately, better profits. How does this help improve businesses? Let's take a look at an example, Business A and Business B. Both start off in the same position, having similar operations and costs. They're expected to have labor costs when they start off and allocate a budget for it. However, while Business A hires full-time workers, Business B implements the smart dosing system with a high initial cost. Over time, the costs accumulate, and by six months, Business B has spent less than Business A despite the high initial spending. A smart dosing system will work optimally for the first year, requiring maintenance every subsequent year. After a year, Business A has spent 24,000, while Business B, which adopted the smart dosing system, spent merely 15,000. In one year, Business A has spent roughly 62% more than Business B. Okay, so this is the IoT dosing panel. It uses these industrial sensors right here to take values such as the pH and EC of a nutrient solution. We use those values to control these pumps, and these pumps will pump in all the necessary uh, solutions such as acid or alkaline or what, uh, whatsoever in order to maintain the quality of the nutrient solution. In addition, the system also uploads that data onto a cloud such as this. And this allows you to monitor anywhere in the world so long as you have internet connection.
A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation, MDEC, a true honor to have all of you here. Uh, I know it's Friday. I know all of you all had your lunch, but trust me, this is going to be a wonderful session. Uh, hand to heart uh, and in respect of the, Malay, uh, the Malaysia Independence Day, let me say salam tani kepada semua. Right? So without any further ado, let me introduce the wonderful, I wouldn't say panel, but the actual uh, Malaysian agriculture stakeholders, right? So let me introduce to you uh, the very first esteemed guest, who is uh, Juan Aza. Juan Aza is the Deputy uh, Secretary General for Policy, Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industries, MAFI. So Juan Aza, warm welcome. Next, we have Datu Azulita Salim who is actually the Director General of Farmers Organization Authority of Malaysia, LBP. Next, we actually have Inche uh, Nazrul, who is the Deputy Secretary for Communication Technology, Ministry of Communications and Multimedia, KKMM, Malaysia. Last but not least, we have Dr. Asman, uh, who is the Director of Engineering Research Center for Malaysian Agriculture Research and Development Institute, MARVI, Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome for the wonderful, I call, stakeholders of the agriculture sector. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, now, without going directly to the topic, agriculture is a sector which is very traditional. Uh, I don't think so you need me to tell that. It's a global uh, a fact. Now, before this, digital was an option. So, petani kalau nak gunakan teknologi digital tu terpulang, kalau tak nak guna tu tak apa. But now, more than ever, digital technology is a priority. With all the PKPs, with all the lockdowns, uh, farmers need digital technology to monitor their plantation uh, for improved uh, productivity, yield, and so on and so forth. Uh, us from MDEC, we have done uh, several pilot projects in the space of digital ECTEC or ELADANG program, uh, covering from chili plantation, uh, aquaculture, pineapple, uh, poultry and the list goes on. We have seen great results. 20% uh, improvement of, of, of productivity, 30% improvement of income. Now to a farmer, that's thousand over ringgit extra every month. So in terms of technology or tech technology adoption, this has been validated. Now the big question, are farmers ready? The answer is yes. But before they even say yes, the pressing concern that farmers actually have right now is what is it available for farmers, whether from MAFI, whether from LPP, from KKMM, from, from MARDI, from other stakeholders, what is it available for them uh, to adapt on the digital uh, ag tech adoption journey? So without any further ado, let me go to the very first question. Uh, Puan Azah, I'm going to put you on the spot. Now, how is MAFI? driving fourth IR technology adoption across the agriculture sector. Puan Aza, over to you. Right. Thank you, Naveen. Uh, thank you to the organizer for inviting me as one of the panelists representing Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industries, MAFI. Well, when we talk about policy, smart and high value agriculture has been identified as one of the key economic growth activities or KIGA in the shared prosperity Prosperity Vision 2030. In line with this, MAFI outlines modernization as its first priority from the five policy trusts in the National Agrofood Policy 2.0, or we call it NAP 2.0. In NAP 2.0, four strategies have been formulated to facilitate modernization and adoption of smart agriculture. These strategies include intensifying research, development, commercialization, and innovation, or we, as we know it as R&D and C&I, increasing the adoption of technology and automation in the agri-food industry, creating conducive ecosystem for R&D and C&I, and intensifying innovation programs and activities to support advancement of agro-technology. In the context of four IR technology adoption, seven initiatives have been identified for MAFI under the National 4IR policy. They involve providing infrastructure, open data platform, and farm to house digital marketplace for farmers to sell directly to the customers. 
therefore enabling traceability requirements. MAFI is currently in discussion with KKMM and MCMC in terms of extending the broadband coverage in agriculture areas to enable the adoption of 4IR technologies. Without sufficient infrastructure for internet connectivity, especially in rural agriculture areas, the technology adoption in agriculture sector cannot be successfully implemented. Priority is also given to increase the e-commerce adoption rate amongst agricultural producers to encourage the marketing of agricultural products through e-commerce platform. MAFI has also collaborated with several digital platforms such as our farm with AirAsia and Shopee. We are also actively upgrading our in-house system, which is AgroBazaar Online to AgroBazaar 3.0 and moving towards blockchain technology through the development of AgroFund platform. To conclude, streamlining relevant policies, providing necessary infrastructures and collaborating with multiple agencies in policy implementation is vital for our role in driving technology adoption in agriculture, particularly in the agro-food sector. Thank you, Navin. One, uh, I, let, let me just translate that in, in Bahasa. Secara ringkasnya, apa yang Puan kata tadi menjurus kepada satu perkara sahaja, iaitu pendigitalan sektor pertanian. Right? So based on the recent allocation under the, the, the National Budget 2021, a very encouraging budget was used for a digital agriculture, people call it. Uh, to farmers out there, uh, kalau yang belum berkecimpung dalam sektor pertanian digital, this is the time. Now, next uh, brings to the second question, uh, Puan Azhar. What are the current initiatives, which I know, tons of which, which are currently led by MAFI to catalyze digital adoption for agriculture sector? Okay. To increase the rate of technology and digital culture adoption, there are projects that has been proven to be successful and would be replicated, such as the Smart Fertigation System for Chilis in Ares Farmer Organization, or we call it PPK, Pusat. Pula, uh, Peladang Kawasan, uh, which is in Langat. I would like to take this opportunity to thank and congratulate MDEC and LPP for paving the way of digital transformation in agriculture sector. This collaboration is certainly a game changer and future collaboration and strategic partnerships in the development of agriculture sector with MAFI is much welcomed. In terms of the agricultural technology development, currently we have several proof of concept projects with high tech farming method involving Internet of Things IoT as well as precision tools such as drones, robotics and sensors by Mardi, the Department of Agriculture and Bioeconomy Corporation that will serve as a showcase to the Rakyat on the viability of technology adoption in agriculture. MAFI also acknowledges that amongst the challenges in technology adoption is the high initial cost, harga yang sangat tinggi lah, and apa tu, lack of financing. Yeah? Therefore, MAFI through the Nation 12 plan has embarked on several initiatives focusing on the modernization of agri-food sector along the food value chain. As we can see from the 2021 budget, hopefully you can see on the screen as well, under the Agrofood Value Chain Modernization Program, 60 million has also been allocated to Agrobank to be provided as a soft loan for entrepreneurs, the procurement of 4 IR technology. In terms of fishery perikanan, we have also allocated 150 million for the vessel modernization program to be provided as soft loan. As for the youth, we have also the Young Agripreneur Program that offers grant and soft loan for them to embark on their digital agriculture journey as a career to upskill or reskill digital enable talents and spur the digital agriculture adoption across the agriculture sector. The high technology adaptation in modern farming has been continuously promoted such as plant factory, precision and vertical farming, close farming system with fertigation technology, usage of IoT facilities, and also the latest automation and mechanization methods. 
Murphy will continue to support the digitalization initiatives undertaken by MDAC, including the agriculture sector transformation and digitalization program in the recently announced National People's Wellbeing and Economic Recovery Package, or as we know it as Pemule. So this program to be implemented by MDAC in collaboration with PPK will identify potential farmers in particular those residing in rural areas towards transition to modern technology. Thank you, Thank Navin. You. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ponaza. Uh, again, uh, let me just translate that in Bahasa too. So, cara ringkasnya dua, which is satunya, uh, project perintis telah berlangsung pada pelbagai kada, pelbagai tempat, pelbagai tanaman. So, kalau nak kata mula-mula itu, it's salah. Cuma, these are more of uh, pockets of initiative. And this year, or 2021 slash 2022, is how can we scale? Uh, menggalakkan lebih banyak penggunaan teknologi digital secara berskala untuk sektor pertanian. Yang keduanya, uh, Puan Azhar, I think you mentioned very, very correctly. Uh, persepsi terhadap sektor pertanian ni, orang kata tak seksi atau kurang seksi. Why? Uh, dirty, difficult, dangerous. Tapi itu persepsi yang salah dahulu. Nowadays, with digital technologies, you don't even need to go to your farm. You can monitor from wherever you are yang akan menggalakkan golongan muda untuk menceburi sektor pertanian secara digital. Right, so Puan Azhar, thank you so much. I, I think I learned a lot. I hope farmers out there yang yang tak pasti apa lagi program yang di bawah MAFI tu, yes, you can always reach out to, to MAFI, uh, but that's a sneak uh, teaser of what's available. Now, let's move on to uh, Datuk Azlita who's eagerly waiting for the questions. <laughs> very good afternoon, Datuk. Very good afternoon. Good afternoon. Dato, uh, you have been very inspirational, or LPP has been very inspirational uh, for our MDEX uh, Iladang uh, Digital Ag Tech uh, pilot program. Uh, truly appreciate it. Uh, but again, I, I know you have a bigger role to play for the country's agriculture sector. So how is LPP playing a role in transforming the agriculture sector towards digital? Uh, thank you, Navin. Uh, first and foremost, I wish to thank you to uh, MDAG and Navin for inviting me uh, in this uh, empowering and agriculture sector with digital agri-tech adaptation session. Um, LPP as the agency under the Ministry of Agriculture and uh, Food Industry, uh, our main function are actually to promote stimulate, um, facilitate, and undertake economic and uh, social development uh, of the farmers organization uh, and also the its members. Uh, LPP uh, and farmers organization were actually formed way back in 1973. If you ask me what is LPP role in transforming agriculture sector, uh, we transform agriculture sector by transforming our farmers and its members. Uh, we have about 294 farmers organization in Malaysia, Pertubuhan Peladang, Kawasan Negeri, and also uh, NAFAS national level, uh, where we have about 920,000 registered farmers being its members. Uh, these are the largest, I mean, these are the uh, uh, target group that uh, we are focusing on. We vision that uh, with a stipulated um, period of time, our farmers organization will be financially strong and stable. And uh, what most important is that they could uh, render efficient and effective services to the members. We want uh, to empower strong and stable farmers organization and its members to enable them to achieve sustainable agriculture activities. We want to uplift their livelihood and a standard of uh, living and uh, uh, for the farmers. And uh, we want the uh, farmers organization to achieve uh, self-reliance. That is being our, uh, our mission. Now, uh, what do we need uh, to achieve the mission? Uh, we have uh, taken stock of each of the F FO's position, uh, their financial state, uh, standing, their core activities, their agriculture activities, and uh, the, uh, the projects that they are involved in, uh, involved, uh, which are actually in producing, processing, and marketing food. The network that they have right now is also uh, being uh, upgraded. Uh, the technology that they are adapting currently uh, is also being monitored by us. 
uh, with all this information at hand, uh, we are confident that it is not something impossible uh, for us to achieve the, uh, self, uh, the farmers' organization mission to be self-reliance and the uh, members' uh, mission uh, to be uh, for that their, their their livelihood to be to be upgraded. Uh, we know that transformation is a big changes uh, that drive uh, through impact in something that we are doing. It is uh, no more an old game. LPP is embarking on technology, IR 4.0, IoT, digitalization, innovation, mechanization, automation in transforming our FOs and farmers. Um, farmers um, currently, they need to lead and adapt to uh, technology in ag agriculture uh, to uh, in 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 their do, uh, in in doing their projects under the Malaysian under the 12 Malaysian plan development programs which are being aligned with the uh, corporate plan of LPP uh, which has include uh, IR 4.0 concept or team in the implementation of farmers organization and in, in members development program uh, the use of modern and smart uh, technology in fact, is uh, uh, suitable to ensure uh, all the uh, pertubuhan pladang uh, or farmers' organization uh, effort to transform or LPP effort to transform the agriculture sector into the modern and viable sector, which can co contribute to agro-food sector and encourage the involvement of young uh, entrepreneurs. We are embarking seriously on um, agriculture digital uh, which is uh, which uh, that is uh, Internet of Things technologies such as smart farming, sensor system, drone, uh, which can help uh, efficient project management. Precision farming is our way forward. Uh, it enables the farmers to increase production and reduce costs by control uh, by control of labor fertilizer that they are using. Uh, everything needs to be precise. Uh, we are very committed in ensuring cost-effective project via satellite farming uh, to enable them to have a uh, cost-effective project. Translating activities to dollar and cent is indeed very crucial because whatever they are doing and whatever system that they are adapting, uh, towards the end of the day, they will look into whether it is profitable for the farmers' organization, whether it can help the farmers to, to increase their income. Uh, FPP is coordinating the metrics between uh, uh, what the farmers' organization involved in supply chain, starting from mechanizing land preparation, seeding, planting and growing, harvesting, uh, up to the marketing of the producers in a smart way. Uh, uh, farm management approaches. Uh, we hope that our farmers organization uh, is uh, with us in this. Uh, the whole new landscape uh, will be connected into digital technology and IoT. Uh, we, of course, uh, when we talk about transformation again, it has to be holistic, Navin. Uh, we are not only talking about the development program that we are doing, we are also focusing on how are we to develop our farmers via training them in upskilling and reskilling, uh, as well as to change their mindset, uh, accepting changes and adapting to a modern uh, agriculture. Uh, we, uh, we would like to take this opportunity uh, to thank MDEC uh, for supporting LPP in uh, dig digitalization under Pomule, recent Pomule. Uh, there will be allocation to subsidize the training for the farmers in adapting the ag agriculture technology using IoT, especially in the fertigation system, planting chilies, yeah, uh, uh, cash crops and uh, whatnot. Uh, I'm very sure the collaboration that we have under MDEC, uh, uh, together uh, MDEC and LPP, uh, under MAFI, uh, of, of course, um, uh, in agriculture technology will be benefiting farmers and the farmers' organization. Thank you, uh, Navin. Thank you so much, Datu. Datu, there is a, there is a word we always say, Sedia berkhidmat untuk golongan petani Malaysia secara digital, happy to do so. Uh, but Dato, uh, seperti yang Puan Azhar kata tadi, I think you mentioned one thing which is right. Kalau nak memberi penekanan kepada penggunaan teknologi digital secara berskala, kita perlukan 
uh, the volume atau bilangan uh, petani yang secara menyeluruh which is actually under uh, pertubuhan peladang kawasan the PPKs under uh, the, the, under the roof of LPP so LPP plays a very very important role sebab projek perintis kalau ditargetkan pada sesuatu PPK kalau nak buat secara berskala LPP would be the guidance for this but but i think wonderfully said happy to support LPP uh, datu that goes to the next question uh, that was very interestingly uh, how does LPP okay, like you said datu LPP is the custodian untuk kesemua pertubuhan peladang uh, kawasan di selar, seluruh malaysia right so how does M- LPP empower these farming associations or organizations uh, towards delivering a potential impact at scale with digital adoption thank you navin navin for the question yeah? um LPP allocated a, a government grant to the farmers organization and its members to implement agriculture projects. Uh, the success of this project has determined the effectiveness of uh, government allocation in effort to improve the agriculture, agriculture sector in Malaysia. The e-satellite program, which is under uh, Food Security Fund 2021, Dasar Jaminan Makanan 2021, is to promote the use of IoT, ICT and smart farming method in uh, agro-food sector. The concept of uh, matching grant which subsidized by farmers and, and farmers organization up to 70% of their total project cost has benefited and helped uh, at, at least uh, the farmers to cover some of the cost uh, because uh, when we talk about uh, IOT, uh, it, it is uh, a bit expensive for the farmers. They can't really afford um, not all farmers can afford uh, using uh, IOT and whatnot. Uh, other than that, uh, LPP also offers financial assistance via tabung, uh, pinjaman, usahawan, and uh, a few others, uh, a few other uh, program to encourage farmers should they, they wish to grow uh, further their, their production. The col- collaboration that uh, PPK has uh, with MDAC under the e-ladang, digital i tech uh, digital tech initiative has proven that the use of iot benefited to more efficient uh, farm management by increasing uh, some uh, increasing income and reducing costs it is indeed a very uh, cost effective approach as uh, every step uh, taken uh, as i told uh, earlier it is precise Uh, the use of, of uh, fertilizers and chemical uh, resolute, uh, resolute, uh, resolute, sorry, watering the plant are done as required. Harvesting time is also uh, determined. Farmers are trained to use the, the IoT system either at their farm or as remote. Uh, as it is now, we have about 1,487 farmers, especially young farmers, has been trained um, on the digital uh, agricultural tech solution, especially on the IoT and data-driven smart farming uh, system for chilies, rock melon, cucumbers, and other types of low-hanging fruits. Um, and they have successfully used the system, and now uh, by you know, uh, by proven that uh, it is something uh, that they have to uh, opt for. I mean, uh, uh, because of the successful that they have achieved, uh, now uh, the system and the way we, we are doing it has uh, attract all other fa- young farmers to come in. Uh, more on the seeing is believing. Uh, as we know, uh, Navin, uh, there are three types of farmers actually. One that are sea change, help to facilitate and perhaps do it themselves. Mm-hmm. One that are see change but doing nothing. And finally, one who wonders what is happening and towards the end of the day, it's too late. Uh, currently, when uh, all the farmers are, I mean, the young farmers, uh, they have seen the successful projects done by uh, our pilot project uh, in, in Pertubuan Peladang Kawasan Kuala Langat. Uh, more and more farmers are convinced and taking part, especially the young farmers. Uh, they are now uh, under the category of farmers who see changes, uh, help to facilitate and do it themselves. This is what uh, APP doing, I mean, what we are doing to empower the farmers. Uh, thank you, uh, Nabin. 
Dato, your, your words were very, very inspirational because it was all, every word was younger family, younger generation, younger farmers. Uh, but just, uh, biarkan saya tarik pendekatan kepada uh, one one factor here. Yeah. So a lot of questions came in sense from LPP, uh, ada funding, ada grant daripada sama ada LPP, MAPI dan sebagainya. Kerajaan memang memberikan peruntukan yang seperlunya, sepatutnya, in fact, lebih daripada yang mencukupi kepada petani untuk meningkatkan produktiviti melalui teknologi digital. The biggest challenge is what people may not know is number one, what is your first step? First step is of course to register yourself as a PPK member ataupun koperasi. Yeah. Sebab macam Datuk kata tadi, setengah orang memang ada minat. Uh, tak pasti nak mula kat mana, nak guna teknologi dan dapat grant. Let me tell you this, the most fundamental baby step hari ni, lepas session ni, the first thing you should do is reach out to your nearest PPKs or corporacies or even organisation, register yourself. Kerajaan hanya boleh membantu orang-orang yang telah di, you know, as in you have endorsed atau telah dijadi, menjadi keahlian di bawah PPK. So please, that is the first step. After that, the, the part is already ready uh, dengan uh, MAFI, LPP, Mardi, KKMM, MDEC, semua pelbagai pihak. We are here to help. Yeah. But Dato, thank you so much. Now moving on, uh, Encik Azrul is already waiting. Okay, it's my turn now. <laughs> so Encik Azrul, very good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to just blow your mind away with a very interesting question. Now, KKMM has always been seen as the driver, the advocate in terms of getting the right messaging to the right people. So uh, initiated by the government, uh, programmed by the government, how do you get this to be delivered to the right target audience? On that ground, how is KKMM playing an essential role in reaching out to the agriculture ecosystem to adopt digital attack technologies? Right, thank you, Nevin. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, Bagi Muazza, Bagi Dato' Azulita, Dr. Azman, my fellow panelists, uh, before I jump straight to the answer, people might be uh, wondering what are we doing here in the middle of the, the three uh, giants of agricultural sector here. Uh, but then um, when the opportunity arises, uh, I have to disclaim myself sebenarnya, saya datang daripada keluarga petani. Ayah dan ibu saya ialah pesawah padi. So I believe when I got invited for this particular session, I, there's no hesitancy. Straight away, I say that this is the one that really touches the people's mind, nadi rakyat, dan kita akan cuba carikan relevansi uh, dan connectkan apakah kepentingan dan fungsi uh, Kementerian Komunikasi dan Multimedia Malaysia terhadap uh, Kementerian Pertanian dan juga industri yang kita maklum sebentar tadi. Okey, sebelum kita uh, pergi uh, lebih lanjut, kita harus ingat uh, the, the nature of techno technology itself. Uh, the technology definition itself comes from the Latin words, combination of technos and logos. It means knowledge of technique. If I could recall uh, the situation when I was small, seeing I came out uh, and bergerak ke urban area sekarang, we have seen the revolution of the agricultural technology over the years. Dan ini sebenarnya mungkin telah pun tersusun secara berstruktur ataupun ia menjadi satu fasa yang terpaksa dipikul dan diadaptasi. If you look at uh, the, the questions, there have always been the narrative on the question which one comes first, adoption or adaption, right? Uh, typically, what uh, the uh, authority does is basically on imposing the adoption part because we believe that on the supply and the regulatory part, everything should be ready. But the one that matters most is basically the one on the demand and the beneficiary side, whether they are ready or otherwise. I'm giving you the example of uh, the, the theory of adaptation. Um, Kalau saya ambil contoh, I'm going to spare you the agony of translating this, uh, Navin. I'm going to try to be bilingual now. Yes. Uh, just, just trying to, 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 to rekindle some memories dulu. Apabila di sawah padi, saya pernah berada uh, masa zaman sebelum teknologi uh, 
begitu uh, memberikan ruang untuk penambahbaikan terhadap teknik-teknik kepada penanaman padi. Dulu masa kami guna kerbau, kami guna kuku kambing, mungkin orang zaman generasi sekarang tak tahu kuku kambing tu apa. Dia tak ada kena-mengena pun dengan kambing. Dia ialah satu apa device untuk penanaman padi. Dan apabila kita nak kena harvest them, kita kena kerat secara manually dan kita kena banting padi. Uh, but whenever the technology comes, automation comes as part of the complementary mechanism to ease and increase efficiency, we look upon what are the feelings of the farmers? What are the feelings of padi planters? Kalau masa zaman dahulu, ayah saya mengambil upah untuk membanting, memukul padi. Just imagine his face when he saw the machine padi comes to the crop. Right? The typical padi farmers were, uh, would, would definitely feel they are the aggrieved party because they could not adapt and things that they are so used to doing are now being taken over and automated by the technological adaption and adoption that creates the whole but it creates another opportunity. It takes a while for them to finally realize that sebenarnya dia memberi ruang keberkesanan dan kecekapan kepada uh, cropping itself dan dia memberi ruang dan masa untuk mereka membuat the odd farming jobs in between the seasons. Uh, it, itu menunjukkan bahawa the technology sebenarnya tidak boleh terlampau kita uh, kekang dan kita tak boleh terlampau impos supaya menjadikan ia satu uh, kemestian apabila perlu diadapt. Ini adalah uh, beberapa sejarah mungkin mungkin relevan atau tidak. Itu yang saya maklumkan tadi apabila teknologi wujud dia bukanlah semata-mata eksklusif kepada satu sektor sahaja. Kalau kita lihat kenapa KKMM berada dengan MAFI sekarang It's basically the nature of technology itself. It is pervasive. It cuts across multiple sectors. It cuts across multiple industry. It creates opportunity of the application, whether you want to use, whether you want to dismiss, or you want to make a hybrid of it. There's no one size fits all that definitely going to be the solution for everything. Dan uh, kita tengok sebenarnya di peringkat Kementerian Komunikasi dan Multimedia walaupun tidak uh, terlibat secara langsung dengan fungsi pertanian tetapi if we look upon our biggest functionality and responsibility is basically to ensure the connectivity of people at large, right? The connectivity is basically now becomes the pivotal element to ensure other sectoral uh, industry would benefit and work sustain. Benda ni yang, akan, yang kita rasakan sebelum ni tidak ada sebarang uh, apa connectivity, now kita lihat ada ketersambungannya. Dan kalau kita uh, lihat juga tadi macam Puan Azhar dah maklumkan, kita ada uh, uh, kolaborasi bersama uh, dalam satu uh, kerangka kerja majlis ekonomi digital dan juga 4IR negara ada satu inisiatif sektoral yang telah diletakkan sebagai dinamakan sebagai smart farming dalam tu KKMM bersama MAFI dan bersama kementerian dan agensi lain are now working our heads and brain and our minds to make sure this would be definitely ready and be a reality within a very near future sebab if we don't do it now, we're going to be left behind in no time. Sebab itu kalau kita lihat dalam elemen-elemen smart farming yang ada, we trying to embark the sub-component of uh, industri, fourth industrial revolution yang ada. We use the big data. We use the data analytic. We use the nanotech nanotechnology as a, a skill of technology we use for that, uh, we do have the virtual reality and augmented reality for that application uh, yang, yang memberikan keberkesanan terhadap pertanian. Yang sebelum ni mungkin kita tak faham kenapa perlu adanya this technology in pertanian, people would now would realize that uh, 
while pertanian is basically the foundation of the livability of the entire population, now we have to accept the other peripheral technology becomes more relevant than ever. Then, kalau, kalau kita lihat juga, um, the, the, the entire value chain and ecosystem of the ag agriculture itself. I'm a professional technologist in telecommunication and broadcasting technology, but my background was in electrical before. I cannot help but comparing and analogize this particular ecosystem to the one that I'm so familiar with. Kalau dalam electrical sector, kita ada electrical generation, kita ada electrical transmission, kita ada electrical distribution. Although the terminology might be different, dalam pertanian, the ecosystem is akin to one. Right? Setiap fasa dalam sektor tersebut ada ruang pendigitalan. Digitalization punya opportunity is always there. Um, bila kita lihat, uh, tadi apabila uh, di, di peringkat penanaman misalnya, dan sebelum di incubation misalnya, ataupun di peringkat retail di hujungnya, setiap ruang pendigitalan tu ada. Di peringkat KKMM bersama agensi uh, MDEC, SKMM, cyber security dan juga uh, mining dan juga beberapa uh, agensi media yang berkaitan sebenarnya telah pun diberi tanggungjawab untuk pastikan kelangsungan setiap sektor yang disambungkan kepada komunikasi. So, kalau kita nak terangkan satu-satu hari ini, Evin, saya rasa inisiatif dia mungkin kita tak habis sampai petang. Sebab the, the reason sebenarnya, uh, kalau before pre-pandemic era, kalau ada apa session panel macam ni ataupun session nak, nak bagi talk, there are two holy grails that people want to avoid. Yang pertama ialah uh, selepas waktu lunch time, yang kedua ialah pada hari Jumaat petang. Kebetulan kita hari ini dua-dua. <laughs> <laughs> Tapi saya rasakan the topic itself today presents and avails a plethora of opportunities so that everyone would gain interest. Dan kita rasakan bahawa mereka yang ada di luar sana, wak imam mereka ialah peladang ataupun dari persatuan tersendiri ataupun mereka ialah private player yang memberikan the system solutions kepada uh, industry itself, mereka merasakan this is the right opportunity and we connect to it. And then, satu lagi saya nak maklumkan di sini, fungsi utama KKMM untuk memastikan the digitalization program to work wonders in various sector, then we have to know what are the digitalization that we are talking about. Kita tak boleh lari daripada tiga komponen utama, yang pertama ialah accessibility of connectivity. Apabila kita sebutkan accessibility and connectivity ini, ini yang tadi Puan Azhar maklumkan, kita bincang bersama semasa Smart Farming Initiative Working Group, kita cuba jajarkan bersama dengan jendela dan juga beberapa uh, mapping uh, facilities untuk connectivity bagi memastikan sekiranya ada kawasan-kawasan yang berpopulasi ataupun tidak bagi tujuan pertanian, tapi memerlukan connectivity, we are working towards that. Sebab kebanyakannya, kawasan-kawasan uh, pertanian ialah di luar daripada kawasan populasi. Dan juga mereka berada di tempat yang agak remote. Macam ada kawasan yang telah digazetkan sebagai taman kekal pertanian Malaysia. Yang sepatutnya menjadi satu manifestasi of kawasan pertanian berteknologi tinggi. Tanggungjawab kita bersama, bukan MAFI sahaja, bukan KKMM sahaja, pelbagai kementerian dan agensi kena pastikan bahawa aspirasi ini akan menjadi realiti. Kembali kepada poin pertama, accessibility of connectivity. Poin kedua ialah affordability of the devices and the software or any related modules for that matter. Apabila kita ada akses tetapi kita tidak mempunyai kemampuan untuk memiliki sebarang peranti yang berkaitan ataupun perisian memberikan aplikasi tersebut pun tak guna. Misalnya, di satu kawasan, di kawasan yang remote, kita readykan uh, connectivity for almost 2 gigabyte per second. Tetapi, kawasan tersebut tidak pun mempunyai remote terminal unit ataupun supervisory control and data acquisition SCADA terminal yang membolehkan ada connectivity through whatever LoRa network ataupun you buat through the 5G or 4G LTE networks. 
pun tak guna. Ini yang memastikan bahawa the component yang memberikan the embeddedment kepada teknologi adaption tu must be ready as well. Yang pertama ialah accessibility, yang kedua affordability. Yang ketiga, last but not least, it might be the most important at all of everything yang kita baru bersama tadi ialah the digital literacy of application. Sekiranya dalam perbincangan kita tempoh hari, kita kena kena pasti apabila kita memberikan connectivity pada suatu kawasan pertanian, kita kena pastikan penggunaannya ialah setara dengan keperluannya. Bukanlah apabila kita beri, tidak digunakan untuk tujuan pertanian, pemodenan pertanian. Sebaiknya digunakan untuk para petani hanya untuk menggunakan untuk tengok YouTube ataupun apa sekadar berkomunikasi dengan WhatsApp. Tetapi ada ruang dan lompong sekiranya tidak digunakan bandwidth yang telah kita berikan. Dan digital literacy ini untuk kita pastikan bahawa mereka yang mempunyai akses kepada digital application juga bertanggungjawab kepada cyber security matters supaya kita tidaklah uh, fragile dan susceptible to other digital intrusion and attack for that matter walaupun orang akan bertanya sebenarnya apa kenanya cyber security dengan pertanian sekiranya apabila kita buat contohnya ada pengairan ataupun pembajaan kepada kawasan crop tetapi cyber security has been breached and compromised that would definitely akan impact the, the the timing the scheduling the volume the capacity of the element that we put forth dalam sistem yang telah nyatakan sebentar tadi so kita tak boleh lari pada tiga ni Nevin accessibility affordability and digital literacy and that is the reason we are here today and that is the reason that we are here to stay now and beyond with mafi and the rest of the industry sector thank you Thank you so much Tuan Nazrul. Uh you, you know what you actually covered more than what we had for the second question or so. But I'm going to summarize that but very wonderfully said. Secara ringkasnya. Now, untuk kita meneruskan kehidupan seharian, kita perlukan air, makanan, udara, right? Now, the first thing, makanan. So, bagi saya secara ringkasnya, tanpa golongan petani penternak siapalah kita. Right? That's why sektor pertanian tak kira KKMM, Mafi Mardi This is a collaborative effort by everyone and we are here to help. Tujuan uh, webinar ini adalah bukan untuk kita tunjukkan muka tak. Tujuan kita setulus ikhlas nak membantu petani untuk menjana pendapatan lebih, meningkatkan produktiviti, uh, of course menarik minat lebih banyak golongan muda untuk berkecimpung dalam sektor pertanian secara digital, right? Digital is the way forward. And macam Cik Nazrul kata tadi Teknologi digital ni bukannya untuk menyusahkan kehidupan seorang petani. Malah, ni adalah untuk menambah baikan operasi peladangan atau penternakan yang sedia ada. For betterment, kalau kita mampu menjana pendapatan C, buat masa kini biasa bagi uh, keumpamaan RM50 sehari tambahan. Bagi seorang petani, itu adalah hasil yang lumayan. So, why not? So, with that, thank you uh, 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 Tuan Azrul. Uh, I'm going to go to Dr. Azman who's waiting patiently. Dr. Azman macam Cinabin, cepatlah Cinabin. <laughs> Hi Dr. Azman, apa khabar? Uh, baik, baik, baik. Okay, Dr. Azman, uh, now when it comes to technology, mardi dengan teknologi ni orang kata sehati, sejiwa lah. Okay, biar saya put in that way. But soalan pertama kepada uh, Dr. Azman bagi pihak mardi is what are the latest technology development yang mardi telah buat I mean, for these many years to help digital adoption for agriculture sector? Sebab kebanyakan orang, bagi orang persepsinya Mardi buat R&D saja, Tapi Mardi dah buat banyak atau pelbagai jenis teknologi digital yang sekarang ni mampu milik dan juga telah sedia untuk digunakan oleh golongan petani. Dr. Azman, silakan. Okay. Terima kasih uh, Nawin. Uh, thank you to MDEC, uh, Cik Nawin that uh, invite uh, Mardi to join this program. And... Uh, I would like also to thank you my uh, Datu Muhammad Zawawi, Datu Dr. Muhammad Zawawi that uh, asked me to join this uh, program, webinar program dan saya sangat berbesar hatilah kerana kita dapat uh, bersama-sama dengan individu-individu individu yang penting lah di apa Mafi, apa Puan Azhar, Datuk Zulita, uh, Cik Nazrul dan juga Cik Nawin sendiri lah. Okay, first... Uh, saya nak sentuh kat sini tentang apa nama Mardi lah. Mardi is the only uh, agency under MAFI 
yang uh, menjalankan kerja-kerja R&D di dalam uh, bidang agro makanan. Uh, Wisi Mardi ialah uh, sebagai penjana teknologi terulut, teknologi inovatif dan uh, lestari dan daya, daya saing industri pertanian menjelang 2030. Dan satu salah satu daripada misi Madi adalah memacu produktiviti dan kelestarian pertanian melalui penjanaan dan pembinaan teknologi moden, cekap dan kos efektif. Saya cuma bacakan uh, the mission Madi mission yang related dengan kita punya topik uh, petang ni lah. Dan uh, trust Madi adalah peningkatan produktiviti dalam sektor uh, subsektor tanaman, makanan dan ternakan melalui penyelidikan inovasi penjanaan dan guna pakai teknologi baru atau moden bagi mentransformasi sektor pertanian dan industri makanan ke arah lebih kompetitif dan lestari, penerokaan, pemuliharaan dan penggunaan biodiversity dan sumber asli untuk kelestarian pertanian serta penjanaan kekayaan baru. Okay, di samping itu juga adalah pengukuhan penyebaran pemindahan dan aplikasi teknologi mardi kepada kumpulan sasar. Maksudnya di sini kita di Mardi not only uh, develop technology but the main uh, important thing is to transfer that uh, technology to golongan sasar. Okay, in terms of digital driving te- uh, transformation in R&D, uh, Mardi uh, telah mengadakan satu kerjasama dengan Maxis to develop uh, yang kita panggil sebagai smart agriculture system where Maxis uh, is involved in 5G Malaysia demonstration project, 5GDP, uh, under auspices of the Malaysian Communication and Multimedia Commission, MCMC. Uh, actually, this project uh, kita telah uh, laksanakan di uh, Mardi Langkawi Agro Technology Park, TATML, because it has a good infrastructure and support system when the project started. The project started uh, 2019. This collaboration also uh, serve a basis for greater collaboration with Macy's for research in the application of modern communication protocol such as uh, 5G in agriculture, as well as uh, the development of related innovation that can modernize country agricultural uh, sector. Okay, at the same time, Mardi also uh, uh, menjalankan kolaborasi dengan TM1 on developing Uh, the monitoring and control system for micro irrigation in our plant factory. In uh, that uh, plant factory is in Madi HQ in Serdang. Madi has developed a plant factory with a capacity of two tons of vegetable production for one cycle. The collaboration uh, ialah kita menjalankan uh, sistem uh, yang mana ada penama sistem uh, networking ini adalah uh, between uh, telecommunication sector and also with uh, government agency lah. Okay, that is uh, apa nama tu dengan kita punya apa nama tu kita punya apa nama telco. Uh, here I, I will touch uh, in rice uh, production industry. Madi uh, terlama lah jalankan uh, collaboration work with Mada, FTV, Felcra in applying. Uh, mechanization system together with digital technology such as efficient farming uh, in uh, rice production where this uh, technology is uh, promising to reduce uh, labor dependency and also uh, reduce uh, input. Uh, di samping itu juga uh, dengan menggunakan teknologi uh, pertanian tepat dan pintar ini ialah kita mampu untuk mengurangkan uh, apa nama ni penggunaan bahan-bahan kimia lah yang ada di Mesra Alam and also kita akan menggunakan uh, nutrien yang lebih spesifik so maknanya kita menggunakan nutrien yang lebih ekonomik lah so uh, saya rasa mungkin uh, setakat ni itu sahaja Nawin saya punya respon kepada soalan pertama dan mungkin uh, uh, next uh, information uh, yang related dengan teknologi yang dibangun oleh Mardi maybe uh, I wait for your next question lah Nawin Dr. Azman, terima kasih Now, yeah, yeah. ringkasan saya senang hmm. Kalau orang kata kat Malaysia ni teknologi digital untuk sektor pertanian belum ada lagi, salah. Tak. Banyak ada. Right? Yang keduanya, uh, sama ada teknologi ni cost effective, memang. Now, kalau orang kata uh, Malaysia, Malaysia used to be a country who taught uh, Indonesia and Thailand agriculture. It, I think it's time that we go back to that lane again. Right? Now, thank you so much uh, uh, to all the panel members. I actually have four questions uh, for for each one of you, one, one, one. Uh, mungkin, now, in, with respect to time, uh, 
sebab soalannya sangat menggalakkan sesi ni macam Tuan Azrul kata tadi kalau nak bagi sejam tu memang tak sempat tapi hasrat kita terus ikhlas nak memberitahu golongan petani yang kita yang tengah uh, aktif uh, uh, watch it live What are the options for you to adopt technology? Sama ada program, incentive, training dan sebagainya. So soalan pertama kepada Puan Azhar, uh, Puan Azhar. Okay, sekiranya saya adalah seorang petani atau nak berkecimpung dalam sektor pertanian, uh, siapakah yang boleh saya rujuk kepada? Uh, sama ada dari, dari segi uh, tanah, dari segi uh, subsidi baja, uh, dari segi training dan sebagainya. Uh, pihak mafi atau let's say I, I, macam saya, I nak mula sektor petani hari ni. Lepas call ni memang orang kata darah muda membara kan. So let's say if I want to go into agriculture technology, who should I, who can I go to for advice? Uh, thank you Nazim. Sebenarnya kita kan ada jabatan teknikal yang pakar dalam setiap bidang lah. Maknanya kalau untuk uh, tanaman, jabatan pertanian, Uh, yang ada di uh, semua daerah lah, dan negeri-negeri kita ada juga uh, kalau untuk ternakkan kita ada DBS kan uh, apa tu jabatan perkhidmatan veterina dan kita ada juga jabatan uh, perikanan lah kalau untuk uh, apa tu bidang perikanan tapi yang paling hampir uh, di sebelah saya tu ialah Datuk Azulita Uh, yang uh, merupakan uh, apa tu lembaga pelabuhan peladan sendirilah uh, lembaga ni kan pelabuhan peladan sini ada di kawasan-kawasan jadi kalau uh, nak dekat teruskan saja berjumpa dengan uh, pertubuhan kawasan lah terima kasih great uh, so untuk uh, sesiapa yang tanya soalan yang sangat baik tadi first thing first kalau nak mula sektor pertanian first thing first Register yourself as a PPK member sama ada PPK atau koperasi atau association of farmers across. And setiap association ada fokus yang berbeza, uh, program yang berbeza, semuanya di bawah naungan uh, MAFI dengan LPP. So that's the first thing, yeah. Number two, uh, Datuk Azulita, I, I'm going to ask this, this because I think we are the youngest in the house, if I, if I can just say that. Uh, but how is LPP encouraging younger generation? to go into agriculture sebab orang kalau ikut agriculture ni uh, peluh lah, uh, tak seksi lah, uh, tak dapat gaji yang lumayan dan sebagainya. How is LPP playing a role to encourage younger generation? Thank you uh, Navin. Uh, uh, younger generation, uh, they act, what do we need to do normally even uh, in LPP? Uh, what attracts them is, uh, as I said uh, previously just now, uh, seeing is believing. Bila dia nampak uh, ada kejayaan, uh, rakan-rakan telah laksana dan berjaya, uh, dia akan uh, terus berminat. Lah. Jadi, um, penggunaan uh, teknologi uh, seperti um, IoT, di mana they can actually uh, they can actually know what is happening to dia tanaman secara fertigation chili nya ke atau cucumber nya ke uh, sama ada perlu air kena diletakkan fert, uh, uh, fertilizers and also chemical uh, lain-lain chemical juga adalah sebenarnya uh, memudahkan mereka. Apabila mudah, they can actually monitor through their handphone kan. Boleh tahu uh, tanaman sekarang ni memerlukan air, dia boleh uh, apa nama remote, I mean, dia boleh activate uh, sistem yang digunakan sambil minum kopi di Starbucks contohnya. They can actually still uh, uh, monitor dia punya tanaman Uh, dan hasilnya pula uh, dengan adanya uh, pertumbuhan peladang, they do not have to worry about how to market their producers. Um, they can, uh, we do also have sistem di mana kita connect dengan uh, apa nama agrobank dan juga beberapa bank lain uh, dan uh, bersama dengan uh, bank negara di mana whenever they want to bring their producers, the uh, farmers uh, organization to sell their producers the very next day they will get their their, their income dia dia punya uh, apa nama uh, jualan daripada hasil pertanian yang telah di diperolehi tadi so it's easy for them they don't have to worry about uh, about marketing anymore so this are the thing that attracts them jadi bila kita bawa uh, young farmers to come in dia nampak 
uh, peluang-peluang yang ada ni dengan bantuan te- teknikal daripada Jabatan Pertanian, uh, LPP kita ada di bawah, dulu kita panggil MOA Inc. di mana Jabatan Agensi bergabung uh, di bawah satu payung di mana whatever they want to do, uh, they become a member of farmers organization, they can get technical advice as what uh, Puan Azhar was saying just now. Uh, and uh, towards the end, dia balik-balik semula kepada dollar and, sign, uh, and sin lah. Dia nampak apa yang dilaksanakan menghasilkan pendapatan. Uh, dia akan join. And this is actually proven uh, di mana semakin ramai. Dulu hanya lima orang saja di uh, farmers organization di bawah PPK Kuala Langat. Joining this program, sekarang ni dah ada lebih kurang 1,400 daripada uh, tahun ke tahun penggunaan agriculture technology, digitalization and what not ni telah menambah uh, minat uh, young farmers to come in lah. Thank you, Cik Nabil. Thank you, uh, thank you Dato' just to quote, uh, saya tinggi-tinggi terima kasih kepada semua rakan-rakan yang telah bekerjasama dengan kami, uh, PPK Kuala Langat, Gurun, sebagainya, a lot of people. So interest ni memang ada. So next question, uh, uh, Tuan Nazrul, uh, very quick, Robin. Uh, so in a minute, so let's say, but, With reference to the Permulih initiative yang telah uh, was announced recently with KKMM, uh, how how do you and I salute you for this being in an agriculture background, raised in agriculture based family. What is your aspiration to digital agriculture for Malaysia? So let's say dalam masa lima tahun lagi, personally from from KKMM standpoint, where do you want to see digital ag tech? Alright, okay. Soalan ni susah ni, macam soalan exam yang paling susah kali kat belakang kan. <laughs> Tapi tak apa. Uh, okay, uh, with the reference of the pemulih punya package, uh, I think if, if we can share with everyone, sebenarnya um, the government has allocated one specific program called e-ladang. Right? E-ladang ni telah kita uh, kerajaan luluskan dan letakkan untuk dilaksana oleh MDEC bersama MAFI dan agensi. Uh, now the name itself is basically electronic ladang it has to have the component of digitization dalam perladangan dan saya rasa bila kita tengok dia punya uh, uh, perincian dan juga brief projects memaklumkan akan ada compositions of multiple elements of YR yang dimasukkan macam kita cerita tadi dia ada additive manufacturing ada IoT ada big data analytic ada apa augmented reality is being put together Sebenarnya apabila kita lihat untuk trying to be uh, the one that have premonition for the next five years, we might not do justice to what going to be, but we can always aspire to have the uh, aspirational type of perladangan yang macam Datuk maklumkan sebentar tadi. Kalau sekarang melalui the pandemic issues, The work from home is everywhere. Yeah. Now, agriculture in five years could be managed from everywhere as well, including the distribution part of it. When it is ready, when it is uh, going to be sorted out with the distributive logistic punya warehouse yang ready bersama digitization uh, facilities, we could see that everything could be seamless. But knowing that as well, we have to ascertain and acknowledge certain impediments that would come. Then inilah impediments yang memberikan kita opportunities to work while we are reaching that five years or a decade after or a few decades afterwards. We want to modernize the agriculture again. For that note, I would like to laud and commend the effort of Kementerian Mafi itself for creating the bahagian pe, uh, pemodenan pertanian ya eh, puan uh, bahagian baru yang telah diwujudkan it, it is very timely while we are now having a single point of entry where we connect all the modernization and digitalization initiative towards mafi then that it works wonders and then dalam dalam beberapa uh, bukan saja kita nak perladangan itu digitized dan modern kita nak juga pastikan kita punya agricultural uh, individuals to be digitally talented as well. Dan kita beri mereka ruang untuk menjadi uh, uh, digital technologists dalam pertanian. 
kalau kita lihat uh, bidang yang telah diberikan ada ruang untuk agriculture based technology juga bersama dengan lembaga teknologi Malaysia dan ini memberi ruang kepada petani-petani kita melihat I think this one of the term have been muted before about uh, making the agriculture sexy again but that is the thing that we have to look upon it's not just about sexy it has to be enticing it has to be sustainably attractive for them and we want to work make sure we have a sustainable work for our anak watan di Malaysia pertanian merupakan adalah salah satu industri dan sektor yang kita boleh ruang kepadanya so five years on the road 10 years on the road we'll see the improved version of perladangan with the right human capital on the digital talent manning it thanks man nice nice uh, ringkasannya kalau nak berkecimpung dalam sektor pertanian digital kalau bukan sekarang bila lagi right so dr azman soalan terakhir yeah. now of course bila orang cakap teknologi ni persepsinya mahal ni ni mesti mahal mampu ke tak uh, berkesan ke tak uh, berbaloi ke tak so question is dari segi uh, technologies from mardi dan rakan-rakan ecosystem uh, is technology for agriculture ready and is it worth it bagi pandangan uh, my mardi dr azman Okay, terima kasih uh, Nabin. Uh, very good question for apa nama kita punya klien lah, uh, usahawan ataupun petani. Uh, sama ada teknologi itu berpaluh ataupun tidak, tu depend lah pada kita punya apa nama petani. And then uh, apa dia punya apa nama uh, produk pertanian yang dia nak usahakan. Tetapi walaupun bagaimanapun, uh, kita jangan bimbang apabila usahawan atau petani berhubung dengan Mardi, kita ada satu pusat, pusat yang kita panggil uh, pusat penyelidikan uh, sejak, eh, uh, ni, pusat penyelidikan so- sosioekonomi, risikan dan pasaran dan agribisnes. Jadi pusat ini kita akan buat uh, apa nama yang kita boleh cakap sebagai dia punya economic analysis lah, economic analysis. Pasal kalau in term of that uh, yang Cik Nabi kata teknologi, teknologi kalau kita nak dapat uh, price Uh, pada harga yang kita nak itu saya rasa tak mungkin lah eh? Pasal, sebagai contoh eh? sebagai contoh kalau kita nak kan uh, kereta kualiti Malaysia itulah harga dia tetapi kalau kita nak kereta kualiti Jepun itulah harga dia kalau kita nak kereta kualiti Europe itulah harga dia begitu juga dengan teknologi tapi wala macam mana pun kita akan tengoklah kita akan tengok dia punya dari segi apa nama tu uh, harga teknologi tu and then dia punya teknologi tu dari segi apa nama tu dia punya ROI dia bila apa semua itu jangan bimbang mana di mari kita akan boleh bantu apa nama dari segi aspek apa yang usahawan sebab uh, contoh sebagai apa nama macam uh, projek terkini lah projek terkini yang apa nama mari sedang develop hasil daripada Uh, advice daripada kita punya MPPN Majlis Penasihat uh, apa nama tu Pertanian Negara untuk kita develop satu apa nama sistem IoT bagi kita punya cash crop. Sebab kita nampak sekarang ni kalau macam Cik Nabin, macam Pak Azhar, pun Datuk Azulita cakap tadi yang kita apa ni Cik Nazrul cakap tadi yang kita nampak contoh yang ada di uh, Kuala Langat eh mana dia dia punya sistem IoT untuk chili. Tetapi atas nasihat kita punya apa ni Uh, Datuk Sri apa nama tu kita punya apa ni penasihat MPPN uh, Datuk Sri Dr apa Sri Razlan eh uh, kita tengah develop satu kita punya pilot uh, skill untuk kita punya sistem fertigasi halia menggunakan teknologi IoT dan bila kita dah dapatkan kita punya apa nama ni kita punya contoh and then kita akan transfer kita punya usahawan pun dah ready dan kita akan sediakan juga di sini economic analysis sebab question dia nanti dia akan tanya with apa uh, ya with uh, mardi teknologi berapa lama baru kita dapat balik dia punya tu pulangan dan sebagainya itulah uh, apa nama jawapan ringkas uh, uh, saya dari mardi ya uh, nabil thank you uh, biar saya petik satu yang dr azman kata jangan risau teknologinya dah ada terbukti so soalannya bila anda nak guna so ladies and gentlemen now there's a say uh, whether daripada pihak mafi lpp kkmm mardi dan juga rakan-rakan orang kata seperjuangan right uh, can we do this alone tak boleh right hashtag kita terus ikhlas nak membantu seberapa ramai golongan petani kat Malaysia untuk menceburi teknologi pintar atau teknologi digital dalam pertanian and these are the ways to do it and this year more than ever we work with everybody so uh, kadang-kadang nampak macam uh, tuan Azrul kata 
nampak buku KKMM MDK sini hasrat kami maklumat kami sama nak membantu golongan petani right tanpa petani siapalah kita right so thank you so much uh, was a wonderful session sebab dua benda bagi sesiapa yang belum lagi mencuburi sektor pertanian inilah masanya bagi sesiapa yang belum mencuburi sektor pertanian secara digital apa lagi tunggu right so thank you so much have a wonderful day salam sehati sejiwa and uh, majulah sektor pertanian bertaraskan teknologi digital thank you so much uh, datuk panaza datuk azlita uh, dr azman datuk nazrul thank you so much ladies and gentlemen stay safe okay bye thank you uh, we, we, uh, i will just take a quick uh, photo of all of us while we have all of us here uh, on account of 3 2 1 paparkan senyuman anda yang paling menarik right 3 2 1 Thank you so much, Dr. Manazar, uh, Dr. Azrul, Dr. Azman. Thank you so much. Okay. Stay safe. Take care. Okay. Jumpa lagi. Jumpa lagi. Thank you, Nabil. And to all our panelists, that was the conversation on the digital ag tech adoption. We'll now be moving forward to our next session of the day. We will begin very shortly. Uh, do click join session and also complete the survey for each of the sessions for us to continuously serve you better. See you in a bit.